I'm Kathleen and I make YouTube videos for parents on how to talk about sex and answer sex questions that their child may have. So today's video topic actually was inspired by a parent who reached out on a previous video and left a comment saying that she wanted to talk with her child about what we're going to talk about today. And I really want to say to y'all parents, thanks for reaching out. Thanks for commenting here on YouTube or on my different social media platforms. It's your questions and comments that inspire my videos. I have a whole list of video topics that I want to talk about, but I really want to make sure that I'm talking about what you are actually in the process of discussing with your child right now. So keep reaching out to me. I am happy to keep making videos every week that help you to navigate the sex talk with your child. So thank you, Casey Ashley, for your comment and question. I really appreciate your support for my channel. Here is the question. My son still has the foreskin on his penis. I'm nervous and trying to come up with a way to explain to him how to correctly pull back the foreskin to correctly wash the head of the penis. Would you mind making a video on the approach that you would take or how you would have the conversation with a six-year-old? I don't even know where to start with this. I absolutely don't mind making a video on this and helping you to feel more prepared to have this conversation with your son. So let's jump right into it. Let's start from the beginning. If you are a parent of a baby with an intact penis, start by talking about hygiene. And bath times are great opportunities to model consent language, as well as explain the purposes of basic hygiene. Bath times aren't just a fun time for the kids to play in water, you are teaching your child a life skill, how to properly wash themselves and how to check their body for signs of irritation or possibly infection, which is very important. I'm a parent and I totally get it. At bath time, you really just want to get it over with. You want to get them to bed and have your evening. But sometimes taking the time to explain what you're doing can help them to understand the purpose behind it. So for example, rinsing out their hair after shampooing, explaining that if you're not rinsing completely and leaving some soap on the scalp, it can cause dry scalp or skin irritation or itchy scalp can help them to understand the purpose behind rinsing their hair out completely. If you have a child with an intact or uncircumcised penis, taking the time to explain in the toddler and primary years that there is no need to pull back the foreskin and clean around the head of the penis because this could cause the foreskin to separate prematurely, which could possibly lead to infection. By pulling on the foreskin before it is ready to retract, it could cause it to tear and this could lead to infections. Therefore, reminding them from time to time that they don't need to pull back on the foreskin in order to clean around the head of the penis during their baths is great. Natural separation of the foreskin from the head of the penis occurs at different times, but generally speaking, many children will notice this separation by the time they get to the primary age, ages four, five, and six. But just as a reminder, parents, this natural retraction may not occur until later. Early or later retraction is fine and normal. So parents, it's great to talk about this and let them know what will occur and so that they are aware and know what to expect as their body changes. Explaining that it's healthy and common for the foreskin to retract in order to clean around the head of the penis and cleaning the head of the penis can easily be done at bath time or shower time. You can say something to the effect of. You're gonna gently pull back the foreskin and this should never feel painful or uncomfortable when you pull back the foreskin. When you do this, you're then going to clean underneath it by washing it with whatever you normally use to wash your body, and then you're gonna rinse it. And after that, you're gonna then push the foreskin back over the head of the penis. And you never want to leave the foreskin retracted after cleaning it. Remember parents, you teach your kids loads of things all of the time. So if you're a little unsure of how to start this conversation or you're a little uncomfortable because maybe your child's already in the intermediate age, don't stress. Approach it from concern, realization of new information, and education. You can say something to the effect of. I know we haven't discussed this much, but I was recently talking with a health educator about hygiene. And one of the things that's very important um, for you to know how to do is how to clean your intact or uncircumcised penis properly. And of course, use whatever term you normally use for an intact or uncircumcised penis. You may notice that if you gently pull back the foreskin from the head of the penis, it will usually retract, exposing the head of the penis. When you bathe yourself, you're gonna to want to pull back that foreskin and clean around the head of the penis with what you normally wash your body with. And once that is done and you've rinsed it, you're going to then push that foreskin back over the head of the penis. And this is going to help to keep your penis free from infection. When doing this, it should never feel painful or uncomfortable. And if it does, I want you to let me know so that we can talk to a healthcare provider. 
Now, parents, there are some medical conditions that you should be aware of if your child has an intact or uncircumcised penis, and those are phimosis and paraphimosis. Phimosis is when the foreskin of the penis does not retract naturally and remains connected to the head of the penis. I'm not a doctor, but if your child's foreskin ever experiences bulging when urinating or it is difficult to urinate, then you're gonna want to seek medical attention. Paraphimosis is when the foreskin is retracted or pulled back from the head of the penis, but cannot return. It can't move back to cover the head of the penis. This can cause pain in the penis, possibly swelling and irritation when urinating. Once again, I'm not a doctor, so therefore if this occurs, medical attention would be recommended. Now, if you do seek medical attention, it's important to know that circumcision is not necessarily the end result of these conditions, but it may be a solution in some situations. Now, when I'm talking to my child, I don't go into details about every possible infection that may occur when it comes to the importance of genital hygiene, but as parents, it's good to know some of these infections because you may have a child who is curious and may ask when you say it can cause an infection, what do you mean? And you can then explain a little bit further for them if they're interested. Now, I also have a video on circumcision. If you are interested in checking that out, it's about four considerations um, for new parents if they are on the fence about whether or not to circumcise. Now, if you're a parent and you want to have more interaction with other parents about the sex talk and talking about sex topics with your child, I've got a private Facebook group called It's Time for the Sex Talk for Parents. Check out the description below, click the link, answer the questions. I admin it and I'd be happy to have you join our group and find this wonderful community of supportive parents. All right, I'm Kathleen. I'll be back next week with another video.